Hey everybody, welcome to the Cast, sponsored by Jolly Good. I'm your host, Charlie Behrens, and this week my guest is Green Bay Packers running back, A.J. Dillon. Uh, it's his second year with the Packers. He's had a heck of a season, and we, oh, there's my mom. Jeez Louise, honest to Pete, am I going to answer that? Uh, let's see here. Hey, mom. Mom, I'm right in the middle of uh, recording my podcast. Can I call you right after? Is that okay? Okay, real good. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, she didn't even say she loved me, <sighs> but that's okay, ladies and gentlemen, because I get enough love from all of you every week when you rate the podcast and leave a comment. Uh, here's here's one. I'm just going to read one here from Jake D. Beloit. He says, the podcast is fine. Um, can you feel the love tonight? Honest to Pete. Can you feel the love tonight? What's that from? What's that from? Is that Aladdin? Jake D. Beloit, let me tell you, you are my Aladdin. Uh, if you guys want to follow the Cripes case, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, before we jump into this podcast, I want to give a big thanks to our sponsors. Jolly Good Soda, the best soda in all of the Midwest. Uh, if you're looking for it, just head on over to the grocery store. If they don't got it, just ask that manager. Just say, hey, can you get me that Jolly Good or no? And they'll take care of you. I'm pretty sure they will. Also, you can order Jolly Good off the internet at jollygoodsoda.com. Let's see here. I am on tour. Uh, We had to cancel a bunch of shows in January due to uh, the sort of COVID surge. We basically just want uh, as many people to see the shows as possible. So we pushed the January shows. We just moved them to the spring. That way, you know, for folks who have uh, underlying diseases or the, the caregivers who take care of them, we just want as many people uh in the audience as possible who bought a ticket so we're just moving those shows and we'll be back up touring again uh starting in february we're going to naples and then um uh denver oh and dude dad's opening for me in denver uh, my buddy taylor love you have seen us do uh video collab so he'll be opening in denver that'll be fun to see uh where else are we going Jeez louise where am i going to figure out where i'm playing uh it should be your calendar charlie but no i'm going to cripescast.com Hitting on the tour page, and uh, now I got a full list that definitely needs to be updated. But starting in February, it's accurate. So we're going Naples, Salt Lake City, Denver, Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Is that how you say that? That's that's a I've never been to Portsmouth, but I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Boston, which is not written. I, I need to update this page. Jeepers Krebs, Indianapolis, Cedar Rapids, Duluth, Minnesota. They're all coming up. You can get tickets at Kripescast.com. Anyway, very excited for this conversation with AJ Dillon. I think you're going to like it a lot. We do get to some deep football talk. We get to his background, sort of where he came from, how he kind of his path toward NFL stardom, uh, his journey with the Packers, what he loves about Wisconsin. Also, we talk about his sort of what he's doing on social media, which includes his podcast, Tune Into Dylan. And I want to plug that at the top of this in case you want to check it out. But he's got a great podcast with his brother in law, uh, Goodfellas. I've been on that podcast. That's kind of how we met. Anyway, he's a great guy. He's got a lot going on. And uh, what better way to figure out about it? than to not listen to me tell you and just listen to him. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is my conversation with A.J. Dillon. So, how was the workout? It was good. Uh, went in there, sped through it. I'm a, I'm a big fan of, uh, like, those workouts that are planned by, like, a trainer or strength and conditioning coach in this case or whatever, just, like, going through it really, really fast. Yeah, is that uh I mean if look if you go through something really, really fast, you probably that's what you're used to. I feel like I would pull something. Isn't there yeah. uh isn't there something to that or I, I feel like it's definitely like probably not, you know, what is recommended. <laughs> but I, I'm always like, all right, well, like what's next like after my workout? I like I never skip any reps or anything like that, but like I'll just like if it's like dumbbell rows, like I'm one, two, three, four, like I just like to get it over. So is it, <laughs> a, a, is it like, uh, is it better to do that stuff slow or does that not matter? Is it, is speed uh, fine? I think, I think technique is key. Okay. Uh, I'm no expert, but I think technique is key. But it, uh, once you get the technique, I mean, you can do it as fast or slow as you want. I think. Oh, nice. You, you know, personally, I don't know. It's worked out for me this far. So yeah, it has because uh, <laughs> somehow you've developed the ability to uh, crush a watermelon uh, with your yes. uh, thighs. So yeah, true what, story. it is a true story. Uh, is that a thing that was done before you did it? Is that like a, 
or did you just see yeah. a watermelon and say uh today's not your lucky day i think it i mean i know it was done before me and uh because i i was like uh, on tiktok in the off season somebody had commented on one of my videos or like hey at like a hundred thousand followers like you got to give us what we want like we need to see you <laughs> crush a watermelon and i'm all about the people i'm all about the fans but i was like seems like challenge enough perfect and uh yeah i went out there crushed the watermelon i i had a try before so in the video uh where i'm like crushing a watermelon you'll see like watermelon like inside like already on the ground before i cracked the second one because i had to practice i had to get the technique down for the first uh, okay. one <laughs> <laughs> there it is again technique yeah. very important all about technique uh, and did you just develop that technique on your own or is there a trainer on the Packers that I uh, give you some pointers? Uh, I will give all credit to, uh, you know, the, the Packers strength staff, um, <laughs> you know, it's not something we focus on watermelon crushing during the season, but in the off season, uh, there's a special weight, uh, there's a special uh, strength and conditioning, uh, program that you can follow to be able to do that. Okay. Yeah. Actually, that's my follow-up question. If I yeah. wanted to be, uh, like, it like AJ Dillon, um, and I wanted to do that. How would I go about doing it? What's my number one exercise? <sighs> number one exercise. I mean, you, you got to go with the old, uh, you know, the old squats. Squats are great, and they might not like when you're crushing a watermelon. You're going like bringing it in, so it might be more groin. To be honest, more of a groin workout. Um, but squats, I just feel like overall, like really get the legs going, really really get that nice lather and uh, you, you need that as a nice foundation for anything you're going to get into. And are we talking standard squats? Like where you put the bar on your back? Yeah. Or? I'm a big fan of, tra I'm, I'm a big traditional guy. Uh, okay. I love the old, old fashioned, you know, just get under the rack. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just squat down there. <laughs> <laughs> ass to grass. <laughs> Is that how far your ass has to go down? No, I mean, they, there's definitely, uh, you don't want it to get too far, but you are supposed to get it like 90, 90 degree angle, okay. right? Like where yep. your knee, like you don't want it below your knee, like your ass below your knees. Okay. Like if you can get it like when you're squatting, like right here, Got it's it. really good. It's, it's hard. good to know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm hoping that maybe, uh, maybe actually for this video, we'll take your, uh, your watermelon video yeah. and then we'll take these training tips I'll mm. do the training and then see if I can do it. Yeah. Okay, so squats and then groin. What do I do to work out the groin? I don't think, yeah. I, I gotta be honest with you. I hope this isn't too much information. I don't think I've ever worked out my groin intentionally. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, you ever, uh, do you remember like back in the day they used to have those like forearm things that every like, 10 year old kid like yeah like, oh i'm working out now and you just like squeeze them yeah but water. the hand squeezers yeah they, they have like they have a thing at the gym that's like like that but for your legs and you like squeeze it okay together. okay so I, i'd say i'd say start there make sure you stretch first um but <clears throat> yeah man i think that'd be great like a little uh you know couple maybe uh, i'd give you a year i'd give you a year well like, i good can't of time to follow to follow these steps I and, can't, uh, I, I don't have, I don't have a year. This video needs to be oh. happen in the next week. I need like, well, get oh. after it. okay. All right. So <laughs> get out. What are right. you doing instead of talking to me? I don't, I'm, I'm flexing my groin as we talk, just so I can, I, like, I don't know make if that's happen. like, uh, I don't want you to get too excited over there. No. Okay. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I do look, you're, you're the one giving me the groin hey, exercises. I, I, I will, I will, I will say that I do think that this video is going to inspire an entire following of watermelon crushers so well just that if there's anything that gets taken away from this video you're gonna have so many of your fans aspiring to be watermelon crushers now so and what great. what more do you really want out of life you know i i really don't like once you once you get to that point i mean you're just doing side quests now so i know is that yeah. is that one of your greatest career achievements is is crushing that watermelon uh you know what <sighs> I, it's definitely up there. Probably not number one, but definitely top 13. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I mean, the top, top 13, 13 is, is, I mean, you've got yeah, a, a lot it's a, of. It's a very like honorable list for it sure. It is. It yeah. absolutely is. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to see if I can uh, achieve one of your top 13. Absolutely. Um, and a follow up question to that with the gym. Uh, mm. 
I, I'm just curious about like, you're a guy who spends a lot of time in the gym. Uh, a couple questions on gym etiquette. If someone is looking at themselves in the mirror, right? Yes. And you step in front of their view, is that Ooh. considered, is that a that, part? That's, that, that's a party foul. Is it? That's a party foul. You, you know, when you're, when you're going through those reps and you're, you know, you're fighting like, like, ah, like really getting that great, that great burn there. Like if somebody messes up that concentration, that's tough. And you need to see like back to the technique, you need to see that, you know, you're doing it the right way. You got that good form going. So if you walked in front of me, you know, that throws off my whole vibe. And now for the rest of my workout, I'm like, who's this asshole? Like, oh, who's really? this guy that's like walking in front of my my uh, my mirror here, like my mirror space? So, it, like, as an untrained sort of guy who occasionally works out, I go to the gym and I see, you know, all these mirrors, and I'm thinking, wow, what a bunch of vain people! But there's yeah. an actual purpose <laughs> for yes. those mirrors, and that's not Absolutely. just to look at yourself. Now, you have to be honest: when you are looking at yourself in the mirror, are you just looking at form, or are you kind of checking yourself out? Uh, you know, now, now I'm definitely, I'd say I'm much older, wiser, more mature. So I'd say, you know, it's all about the form, but back in the day, um, like last month, uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely checking myself out, <laughs> making sure I'm looking ripped and everything like that. You should catch me in the off season workout and they're doing like random crunches and core and get up, just get a little stress. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're looking. <laughs> Okay, what is the most useless workout at the gym that you see everybody do? Ooh, all right, that's that's a tough one. Um, useless workout. I like I can't think of one right now, but what I can say is like, like when you see these like videos of like all these people trying to like do normal workouts, but in this super extra way, like holding out of these bands and like jumping from one side, like being out of a seat and jumping and twirling and like yeah, just right. do it like how it's supposed to be done. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but you've seen these, like you've seen them on yeah. these type of social media, like somebody is doing a traditional workout, but with this whole extra twist, you just don't have to do all that. Just yeah, that no, stuff. it's very simple. You do the, the basic workout and you find the angle that yeah. makes your ass look the best. And then exactly. It, I mean, it's worked for this long. Uh, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> work for this long. You either got it or you don't. My favorite Chad Ojosinko quote. He uh, used to eat McDonald's all the time. And was obviously a fantastic wide receiver and everything. Hall of Famer and everything. But, you know, they're like, why do you always eat McDonald's? And he goes, you either got it or you don't. <laughs> <laughs> just, that, just that simple. <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, at the end of the day the the little things will only matter a little bit right yes but like yes. you're either at that level or you're not um all right uh last question on the workout thing then i'll get over it uh the little workouts you do like you said the squeezy things to work yeah. out the forearm you pe see people yeah. do this with the weights you used to oh, see yeah. that a lot you don't see that a, as much anymore maybe i'm not no. paying attention is that not a good workout um i I don't, I, I, like you said, I haven't seen it in a, a very long time. Uh, but you know, I, I won't say that like older workouts, um, you know, aren't good. There's actually one video and it's probably, I don't know how old it is <clears throat> and I don't want any older listeners to get offended. So I'm not going to like throw out a date because it might be like the nineties. I'm gonna be like, yeah, back in the 1950s. <laughs> uh, but there's this video on YouTube. Um, I religiously watch it when I'm really trying to get like that summer body, whatever it's called eight minute abs. And I kid you not, it's these guys and like the, the, like the tight plastic and he has this whole like group where I don't know what the, what the late, like latex fit on whatever. Yeah. And it's like, has this old, like, it seems like a scene out of full house pretty much, but it's like hilarious. But that workout, I kid you not, like if you do that every single day for a month, you will have the best abs you've ever had in your life. Really? Eight minute abs on eight YouTube. Minutes. It's actually like nine minutes and 12 seconds, but the actual workout is eight minutes. I uh, want to do a video just like that. I want to call it six pack abs where I just drink a six pack and you watch oh, my I, abs. I love that. Let me, let me know if I can be, uh, you know, I can come on that. Yeah, on actually we, yeah. we should do that for this It'd summer to get the yeah, summer bod going. Yeah, Absolutely. perfect. 
All right. I'm, we've we've established so much so soon in this podcast. I'm fired up. It's great. Hey, uh, throughout the podcast, I asked a bunch of fans for questions, and I got a lot. So uh, I'm going to be peppering in some fan questions throughout. Let's do it. Uh, but Pepper let's let's first off <laughs> start with getting your backstory. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from uh, New London, Connecticut. I was born in Baltimore, um, but I'm from New London, Connecticut. So East Coast guy. I uh, went to school out there, and uh, that's pretty much where all my family is from, Connecticut. Um, yeah. I went to a boarding school in high school, so like a prep school, uh, like two hours away from home, not like super far away. But that's where I claim uh, like all the like I'm from Boston, whatever, because, uh, you know, I, I lived I pretty much lived there for four years in high school. And then I went to Boston College for another two and a half years, the three seasons I was at in college. And uh, so like seven years of my life, I was there. Uh, living out in Boston, so East Coast kid through and through. Cool. What What was uh? When did you move from Baltimore to the New London? I think I was like three years old. It was like really, really young. My mom was uh, finishing up school uh, when she moved back to Connecticut. Uh, well, after she, whatever, she went to school in uh, Maryland. So, got it. Got back, it. Yeah. What's the vibe in New London? What kind of town is that? Uh, the vibe. It's a. Uh, <clears throat> Kind of think of uh, the vibe just gritty, like really like blue collar, just like kind of. I don't know why this is what's popping into my head, but I think I just was listening to like way too much like rap on my what like in the workout room before I got on this pod. Yeah, but uh, like getting it out of the mud, like get it out of the mud, like that. That's kind of the vibe, just like grinding, like grinding yeah. for everything you have, like really gritty. Um, yeah, just kind of blue collar, roll your sleeves up. Nice. Like other type of people, type of folks. Okay. And what uh, inspired you to uh, start playing football? What was that? What was that moment? Yeah. Uh, I was a baseball guy for the longest. Um, big baseball fan. I was a big Yankees fan growing up. I know anybody who listens to this from Boston, I'm sorry. I've yeah, they're going to be upset, ever. dude. Yeah, I've been, I've been changed ever since. But as a young man from Connecticut, big Yankees fan. And, um, and, and for the first time I saw football, like, like my mom always brings it up. She, I was like, oh, my God, like, why would they just run into each other? That's horrible. <laughs> That's like the worst thing I could ever imagine. Uh, but my grandfather, so my mom's uh, dad, actually played. His name's Tom Gatewood. He played at Notre Dame. He's in the College Football Hall of Fame, played for the Giants. So he's big dog in the house and, uh-huh. uh, you know, just – uh, just kind of watching his highlights. He used to show me like cotton bowl highlights back from him in college in the seventies. And, uh, my, my stepdad plays like semi-pro football still. Um, so I just had a lot of influences and just kind of got into it. I was like, let's do it. And I ended up being pretty good at it. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so running back, was that always your position? Uh, I started off as tight end. Uh, okay. so there was a uh, weight requirements at, to play pop Warner football and, yeah you had to stay like between a certain limit to be able to run the ball. <clears throat> and the first year I did it, uh, I really didn't care what position I didn't know, really know any positions in football. So they just put me on tight end. But by the end of the year, like we'd have at least five tight end reverses where I literally just, I'd be right here. Quarterback <laughs> run around, motion me and I just grab the ball and run all the way. Back then I was faster than everybody. That, uh, so we go. <laughs> yeah, that was your play though. Was the reverse tight end rever- tight end reverse it's, at least five times a game? Yeah. Uh, I it, you know it's kind of tradition that in any of these uh, podcasts where I speak to a professional athlete, I have to bring up my uh, time as a um, you know semi professional athlete. But in yeah. in eighth grade, uh, seventh eighth grade, I was a split end, and Ooh. I write twenty eight reverse. That was my play. So I love that. I can I can relate to you because that's that the is. that's like the the sweet spot for reverses. It's like grade yeah. school, right? Because no one Absolutely. stays home, right? Absolutely, no one does. Everybody just runs like uh, C ball, hit ball. Like that's yeah. all they. See. Like, it's just like oh, the ball's over there. Go any reverses, any fakes, flea flicker, all that stuff is like gold in elementary school. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I mean, going going back to your you know summer semi professional days back in eighth grade. Yeah. Uh, you know, my recess stats are top notch. Are they? I, I like, I'd say I'm in recess hall of fame. 
recess hall of fame no year. kidding when did you get uh, undoubtedly number one draft pick every single day of recess after lunch uh you know more more touchdowns and uh races and I, I can you know even count kickball you know i, I really did uh, just say my my position at recess is ath for athlete oh, wow. and uh just i don't like to toot my own horn when it comes no. to football but when we're going to talk about recess goes yeah. I'm definitely going to go throw my hat in the ring. You know, and I think you absolutely should, because if you're not going to, uh, it's not like we have your entire recess squad still exactly. around here. To, exactly. So you got to you gotta give us – you're not even tuning your own horn. You're just like yeah. I'm just, accounting I'm just giving history. You the facts. I'm just yeah. giving you the car facts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, okay, what – when you were – were you playing – was your position at recess – Running back was it tight end? Was it quarterback? What was it? Uh, it was usually uh, honestly back then I just played quarterback. Oh, you did had the all time yeah, QB, I, but I cannot throw. I'm not like I'm not a great thrower of the football. I've never claimed that in elementary school. I was okay. Okay. Um, but I just didn't want anybody else to. I didn't want to rely on anybody else to give me the ball. Oh, so you're a control freak. Yeah, and, yeah. you know I've I've grown I've grown a long way. You know, from that, I'd say. But, uh, yeah, no, back then, I really – I like to make sure, like, if I won the ball, like, I was going to be the person that gave it up to somebody if I needed to. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's uh, <laughs> that's very good. I'm sure there's some psychological stuff behind that that we don't need to unpack in this podcast. But. No, it's, I mean, we'd be here forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is That's a different sort of Zoom session. Um, yeah. Who is – when you were on the playground, though, what football player were you looking up to? Did you, like, want to yeah. be? I was Adrian Peterson. Oh, were Adrian you? Adrian Peterson was that man. It, well – um, uh, when I was really, really young, Ladanian Thomason, uh, oh, nice. when he's back with the Chargers, and then uh, a Adrian Peterson, Vikings AP was like, uh, like go. Obviously, everybody knows he was unreal, like obviously yeah. football player. But to me, back then, every time I'm running, I'm running in between the swings when the people are going. I'm just trying to get back and forth. Anything I was doing, I was Adrian Peterson, and uh, just like walking uh, to and from class. Just kind of walking and people are coming my way and I'll do a little spin behind them or side. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so uh, seriously, though, you did you have this like mentality since you were a kid that uh, you were going to be uh, like the best at what you do? You were going to take this to the professional level or did that just reveal itself over time? That just revealed itself over time. Uh, like I said, I, I when I first started playing football, I wanted nothing to do with it. Yeah. Uh, I like just even putting like my pads and my the 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 pants that they give you and the little sleeves and pockets like yeah I I'd, I'd always put them in backwards yeah, like you were that kid they're they're they're, uh, <laughs> they're like a they're curved I'd curve them the wrong way so yeah. like the <laughs> part that's supposed to go around your leg is facing there was I'd always that, that I, kid I, yeah I'd religiously do that like I just when I I really did not like football but you know like I said I ended up being really good at it and. You know, over time, made a bunch of great friends and had some great coaches. And obviously now I love it. I love what I do and everything like that. Dream come true. But didn't start off like I didn't come out the womb like I can't wait to play football. It really grew on me. And, you know, the love of the game grew over time. And when when so there was no real shift. It just yeah. it just eventually happened. Uh, Yeah, I really think it just kind of happened over time. Uh you know, going, obviously playing Pop Warner, at like youth football was really fun because all my friends played and, you know, I was good. And it was like a great way to like talk to the middle school girls because they were all cheerleaders. So like, it was great <laughs> to be the guy in the team. I could walk through and, you know, give give the girls a hug at school and they'd be like, oh, my God, you scored a touchdown. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, just what I do. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just what I do, you know, I'm here all day until three o'clock and I got to go hit the bus. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, I'd say maybe uh, in the high school, uh, probably like sophomore year. After I got my first scholarship, uh, I got my first scholarship my freshman year, but my uh, coach actually didn't tell me until after the season because he didn't want me to like lose my focus. Uh, but uh, I'd say after that, when I was like, oh man, like I can like really go to get a full education out of this at that time i was not like freshman year of high school I was not thinking go play professional sports i was just like oh wow like 
I can get a, go get a free education. Like I can go to college for free. My mom's a teacher. So academics, all that stuff was really big in our household. I was like, wow, that's sick. Like I never thought of that. And uh, yeah, and then it grew and I obviously got more offers and I was like, oh shit, like we can really do this. And you know, it's fun, fun that, ride. That's incredible that, I mean, that's not typical freshman year to be getting scholarship offers, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so did, did that inflate your ego? As a high schooler, young, impressionable uh, high schooler? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't think it inflated my ego just yet. I, I would say it definitely, like, gave me that confidence. You, I I don't know if this – I don't know, like, how your uh, uh, podcasts run. I don't know if uh, you can pull in video, like – Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Video and stuff. Yeah. But you got to – like, there's some video – like, if you saw – okay, sorry. I'm going off on a tangent No, here. do it. Me, high school me – Versus like the me you see today are completely different. First of all, no bald spot. Like <laughs> I had, a, I had, I was going to, I was going to recruiting visits with entire fro. Oh, I was going to recruiting visits to school with a fro and big glasses. <laughs> like big glasses, like look so goofy. Um, and, and like I said, where I'm from, like kind of really blue collar, everything like that. Uh, to me, really dressy was like a polo shirt like the you know polo with the horse and yeah uh some cargo cargo uh pants oh, like, you're cargo pants, all the pants. like those are my khakis and like yeah. some Jordan. Like, that's like i'm like we're going out to a nice dinner like that's it <laughs> and this high school that i went to so completely on a tangent here but the high school that i went to is a prep school like it's lawrence academy ground massachusetts it's it's like tens of thousands of dollars a year you know to go there and you yeah know, i got financially and you know all that stuff yeah. but uh, <laughs> to, to obviously for my education uh an academic scholarship um but um it's just you know i was with all these guys with like blazers and this and that and like all these nice things and i'm just like little me is hilarious and i don't even remember what question you you asked me but like just, just i was just thinking about like oh you're asking me about the ego yeah, uh, it helped out with the confidence, I'd say, because okay. I was out there running around like it's crazy. Did you feel like, I, so are you saying, did you feel like out of place at that school when you first went there? Because it, it yeah. was like so expensive and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't feel like out of place because I got some really good like friends really early on, which yeah. kind of helped me. But I def it was just like one of those, uh, you know, culture shocks, I guess. Um, and. and I'm sure you didn't want your whole podcast to be about my prep school life, but it no, was uh, it like I do accredit a lot of things, like even being able to talk to you how I do, um, because my air where I'm from is pretty much you know predominantly black and like very big uh, Hispanic population. Like there's a few like you know Caucasian white people like that, but it's kind of you know that's really what it is. And there, uh, my roommate, my freshman year or my sophomore year is from Hong Kong. Uh, I know. A, uh saudi arabian prince uh, oh, wow. this is all from my high school and like i know a girl from sweden and like it was like people were coming from all over the world to go to this school and so i would say just like connection to be able to talk to anybody and have a hold a real conversation like it did teach me so much but when I, yeah when i first got there i was like what the heck like, yeah. i've never seen anything like this so yeah i mean because you uh, so were there other people there Cargo pants was not the predominant fashion no. of your high school, yeah. is what you're saying. No, no, I, absolutely not. Uh, you know, I was uh, sticking out like a sore thumb. But, you know, I figured out over time, I'm rock my cardigans yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> big cardigan guy. Yeah. You know, you just, yeah. it's like, just like, it's just a big sweater, but like, it looks really fancy. I just uh, like cardigans because of the dumb and dumber line. Pull over. No, it's a cardigan, <laughs> but thanks for noticing. <laughs> I bought in cardigans just for that reason. I yes. didn't even know what it was till that. Uh, but plug, I, plug, the, plug the cardigans. Yeah, plug the cardigans. <laughs> so, but uh, so you do it, and then you get there and you start playing football, and then um, and once that scholarship kind of came in and you heard about it, did that like that put you on sort of a different level? You think in taking yeah. it seriously? Yeah, absolutely. I definitely started to, you know, take it a lot more serious. Um, I was like, what more, you know, this is a great start, but what else can I do? Uh, obviously at that point, you know, you want to get as many scholarships and then uh, find the right school and everything like that. But like, what can I do? Like what can put me 
and the best was how far can I take it? Yeah. And, uh, you know, still, still asking myself that question, like how far, like, can I take this? I got right now, like I'm in a great spot. Like, yeah, I can, you know, settle here. Like, yeah, I had a thousand yard season in the NFL. Like I'm good to go. Like yeah. how far can I take, like, can I be an all pro? Can I be a pro bowler? Can I, et cetera. So, uh, but it, it's cool. It's cool to just like keep that building. Well, and I think getting into that mentality uh, is kind of part of what I'm trying to do. Like, what what is it that makes you different from other athletes out there to get to the uh, professional level and succeed in the way you have? Like, is it that always asking, um, you know, can I get to the next level? What drives that? I guess is it is it, yeah. and, and I don't say this like in a um, a demeaning way at all. Yeah. But is it is it like um, is it the financial security? Is it the fame yeah. or is it the, um, the drive for like, what is underneath that yeah. drive? You think I'd say, uh, you know, it's definitely changed over the years. Um, I would say number one over everything that I've been really blessed with is a great support system, like not to get all sappy, mm-hmm. but you know, I have a big family who like supports everything I do. Even the podcast I started up and whatever, like, all in like when i say like this is something i'm gonna do like they're all in on it and my fiance and her family um my coaches over the years i've just really been blessed with great support staff so i'd say that's definitely a big part of it uh-huh. um but as far as you know like drive what's the drive um like when i was talking about pop warner earlier you know i yeah. was saying you know the reason i was really doing this because hey like the cheerleaders like it was like oh like, yeah the, you're, you're the cool kid in middle school so back then that's what it was like and then high school, kind of. it was, you know, get to get to college for free, essentially. Uh-huh. And now looking at it now, like my answer is, you know, what my drive is. I'm just thinking about like what I want my future to look like. And in my my mind, like my future, it's not like X amount of dollars, but it's just kind of like you said, like financial security. But almost in the sense, like I just imagine myself, like I want to be able to retire and I want to be able to just hang out with like my kids that I have one day all day and not have to worry about going to work. Yeah. I want to make sure like I can just, you know, be done like with football, whenever that is, and just hang out do whatever. Like if they want to, if they're playing sports, I'm at every game coaching, got my hat on, just like, yeah. washed up athlete talking about what I used to do. And they're <laughs> saying like, dad, like we get it. You played in the NFL. We don't care. Like that's, that's exactly what I see. And that's what I want. So like, that's my drive. And I'm like, getting up to practice i'm like oh this sucks but i don't want to be doing this 20 years from now also going to work i just want to be able to you know hang out with my kids so right right that it's cool to see yeah and you're it's funny how you do see that change over time like starting off like doing it for uh yeah i don't know like the girls or whatever middle school fame (laughs) yeah yeah middle school (laughs) for sure yeah exactly you know, it's interesting when you see a lot of uh, football interviews um, and, you know, they like it's like what what's going on or like, how do you feel about it out there? And, and usually the answer is some form of, you know, uh, I'm just trying to get the job done for the team, you know, yeah. like or someone has a great season. They're like, what does this mean to you? It's always like downplayed, I feel like, in the interviews. Yeah. What it, what do you think that's about? Is, do you think that's an honest answer from I'm not saying from you necessarily, but yeah, from yeah. like a lot of football players? It, are they seriously just trying to get the job done or are they trying not to build too much hype around it? So they yeah. they get the jitters or something. What's yeah. behind that? I, I'd say it's kind of like a double double edged sword there. Um, one. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you you had a like very successful career and you're always talking and you know, doing your shows and doing your podcasts and you're always kind of in front of a camera, in front of an audience. Yeah. You never want to not give credit to those. who. Like, it's just kind of like one of those things. I don't know when you learn it. Like nobody actually tells you like, hey, like make sure you thank so-and-so. But yeah. you know, like that's kind of what you're supposed to do. Like if anybody, like if I had a 200 yard game, like, oh, AJ, like how'd that, like obviously like thank your offensive line, thank right. your the team. Like it's just kind of one of those unspoken things. Like, if you're a humble dude, I mean, some people don't care at all, but like, if you have some type of morals about you, some kind of good, like home training, I guess that's kind of like the first go-to. Um, but I would also say, um, talking about athletes in general, I do think that there's a, you know, huge part of just like the, 
I'm trying to think of the word, but just how quickly things can change. Uh, you have a good game or a bad game. Like I had a bad game uh, against the uh, Washington football team. I'm trying to remember their new name. Yeah. Uh, the Washington football team this year. I terrible. Well, my worst game today. You know, and one day down the road, like eventually I'm gonna have another bad game. Like there's, you can't have all great games. And I remember like after that game, I, and I do have a bunch of really understanding, really nice fans who were like, there, like, Hey, it's okay. But there was a lot of people who were like, you're awful. You're trash. Like my, like negative fantasy points. Like how could you blah, 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 blah. And so I do think that, you know, social media and all that stuff, like nobody ever wants to not nobody, but most people don't want to like hype themselves up too much because you know how quickly it can all change. You know, it's just like a sad way to like think about it. And I'm not trying to get on my soapbox, but like, you know, we're going to the playoffs, right? And the goal is to win the Super Bowl. And that's what we're going to do. And that's what we're going to strive to do. But uh, like looking at last year, obviously we didn't get there. And everybody's like, you guys are blah, blah. You can't do it. You can never pass the NFC championship. So it's so create, like you can see that. And so you don't ever want to like put yourself on this pedestal where you're like, I'm the best ever. Because the second that you're not, everybody's going to tear you down. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And in that sense, you know, there are those people out there who are like, I don't get football. I don't get why everybody watches it or whatever. But it, obviously it's there's so many of these like life lessons in uh, football. And yeah. I think especially with the Packers where you have like the team, you know, kind of like owned mm -hmm. uh, by the people and the very supportive fan oh, yeah. base. But but then um, the team mentality, too, it's like we're, we're not doing really anything in this world by ourselves. And no. so that idea of always giving credit. I mean, look at you. You give props to the training staff with the watermelon thing. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that, that was all that was all them. That was all them. <laughs> uh, let's uh let's get to some fan questions uh right now. Um pop some up. Oh, jeez, Louise. Okay. I've always wondered who I what always wondered like who Louise is and like what she did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, you know, it, I that's that's actually a great <laughs> bit right there. Like, gee, like, like for for that to be coined, for that to be yeah. coined is like a thing that everybody says. Like, I just imagine like a really old married couple, and, you know, they're like elderly, and he's like, "Geez, Louise, like, you didn't use the poopery." <laughs> <laughs> maybe comedy's your career after uh after football i think you one day i'll take some notes <laughs> uh okay uh, this is from Corey. uh uh plagiarist or plagiarist i don't know how he wants me to pronounce that uh i believe he is into sports cards ask him what he's been buying and what his best or favorite card is can't wait to hear Ooh. it so okay. yeah we talked about this a little bit before the audio messed up at the beginning of this but yeah basically you're a big uh sports card guy you've been mm -hmm. in it a while let's get the backstory and then we can answer his uh question yeah uh, obviously, uh, you know, coming in the NFL, I, there's sports cards. You always see like rookies sign them and guys sign them. So I actually didn't plan this. I'm wearing the shirt Panini. That's the only props I'm going to throw at them. But, you know, Panini uh, usually hooks up like the rookies with a little rookie deal and you sign a thousand of cards and jerseys and blah, blah, uh -huh. um, to go in the cards. But I actually got into it this off season. Uh, so I'm kind of a late, I got a, got a late start on the whole card thing. When I was younger, I used to collect Pokemon cards and I had some baseball cards to throw in my backpack, like every little kid. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this off season, I went down, I had a few more cards that I needed to sign to like finish up my rookie uh, contract with them. And so I'm doing that and they gave us some boxes of cards just kind of on our way like here, like, you know, thanks with like some merch, blah, blah, blah um and the check which is most important and <laughs> so so i went to go hang out with uh, my fiance well girlfriend back then but fiance is now uh family down in naples and we we're down there and i'm opening up these cards one night and i took a tiktok video actually and i was like hey like are any of these good because cards kept coming up on my for you page yeah and uh somebody was like man you had a 200 hundred dollar card there like at least and i had you know the number, I didn't see that comment for like two, three days. I left Florida, threw all those cards just in the trash. I was like, I'm not going to. And I'm like, what? <laughs> $200 card? And I'm like, our cards like that big? And I kind of went down the rabbit hole the, the ensuing weeks. And, you know, I'm seeing these cards going from a million dollars, hundreds of thousands and this. And, you know, I really learned like how they grade them, how like all this stuff. And so 
uh, you know, it's a really fun hobby. And, you know, I do live breaks uh, on the Loop app, uh, which is an app on your phone. So in the off season, I'll be heating it up. I might do one this week, but I'll pretty much be in front of a camera. Yeah. I'll just be opening up boxes and people can buy the box or the pack. And I'll open them up, show them what they got, sleeve them in like good condition, send them out to them myself. We call it um, Dylan's deals. I have like a whole, I hope the whole shipping labels and all that Dylan's deals running out the basement. Yeah, uh, I, I, that's <laughs> that you got a lot. Um, I mean, that's got a big following on social media too. Yeah, or on on Instagram at least. I just saw that. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's fun. So it, that that's kind of cool because what I like about you, I mean, you have the podcast you know, which we'll talk about in a second, but you've also, you do Twitch and you do all this other stuff. Yeah. And um, like, what what kind of drives that? Oh, wait, before we get to that, let's just- Yeah, I got it. We got to wrap question. this up. Um, I, so what are you buying right now and what's the best card you have? Yeah, uh, so I had, a, I had a time where I was all about buying my one-on-one. So what that is, is uh, obviously, uh, you've seen uh, Derek Jeter, because I was talking about the Yankees earlier. Derek yeah. Jeter's card, AJ Dillon card. You can get them. That's great. You can get them some time. They're signed. But where the cards get more rare is where they're numbered. And on the back, it'd be like an AJ Dillon, one out of 999, and two out of 25, or f one out of five. But it, eventually, there's a one on one. And that is the Fi like finite one in the entire world is one in existence and there's so many variations there's like not one of one card when you're a rookie there's like 60 different well, you know 700 probably but so when i kind of got into it i was like i'm a big believer in betting on myself yeah. uh i have a, literally have a tattoo on my arm that says i always bet on myself and it's not a cocky thing it's always just kind of reminder like don't feel lack of confidence like look at what you've done already like just even if like shit, if football ended tomorrow, like bet on myself with the podcast, like figure, yeah. like you, you'll figure it out. Um, don't don't lose sight of that. But to answer his question, one on ones, AJ Dillon one on ones is what I was collecting. Now I'm big on, uh, uh, I don't know how to say his name the right way, but Otani, the baseball player. Oh yeah, um, who went off? I believe he played for the Angels. I have some of his cards. And uh, to answer his second question, the best card I have. Either a, an Otani rookie card that's autographed, or I would say um, I have a Justin Herbert card that has Justin Herbert on the top and then Jordan Love on the bottom. And they oh, both yeah. signed, like I saw both of them, I saw Justin in California and obviously you see Jordan here. They both signed it and both put one of one on it, which is like obviously not a real one of one, but they both wrote one of one on yeah. it. Yeah. And so I have that like graded and slabbed up. Um, so that's, that's my, uh, that's my holy grail. Is it? Is, it, yeah. is that which one do you think is the, worth the most right now? Right right now, the Otani card for sure. Okay. Um, okay. But I mean, Justin Herbert keeps playing the way he does. And, yeah. you know, the, the, uh, I don't want to jinx anything, but you know, the track record with uh, Green Bay quarterbacks, you know, three and however many years. Yeah. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, if uh, Jordan can. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. If he can follow in that line of all those guys, Bart Starr, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, Jordan Love, yep. uh, that card will be worth a lot of money. <laughs> oh, let's hope so. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for that, too. Um, yeah. And and it, it's not just Jordan. You had uh, Aaron Jones signed a card. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and so so that's the other thing. Uh, like, I do – like, there's, there's a big uh, investment part of the hobby. Like, people do, like, buy and flip cards and – like I said, I, I do the live breaks where I sell cards and I do trade cards and sell them. Uh, but there's also the big, the thing that makes it so much fun is like at its root, like you collect these cards and want to hold on to them. Yeah, yeah. And so like, I'm not, I don't ever even see myself ever selling that Jordan Love, uh, Justin Herbert card because they're both my really good friends. But I just think yeah. it's so cool to watch it grow. Like as they perform and as they grow, like their value, like I'll never like, Maybe I'll sell some of my one ones because I have way too many now. But yeah. you know, like I'm not gonna sell those. I had Randall Cobb. I got a rookie card of Randall Cobb. That's my favorite card I have to yeah. dive even deeper. I have a Randall Cobb card and it has a little patch and it's a Reebok. So you're talking like old school. Like oh wow. Reebok logo on there. And I brought it into him. I was like, hey, like Mr. Cobb, can you <laughs> sign this? Can you please sign this for me? I like cars. He was like, all right. 
kid. Like <laughs> for sure. that was like within like two weeks of meeting them. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. What have you ever asked anyone to sign a card and they said no? I haven't had anybody say no yet. Uh, I have some uh, Aaron Rodgers cards <laughs> that I haven't worked up the courage to actually ask him to sign yet, but yeah, what, I'm just waiting for the right moment. What What is that moment going to be? What 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 like mood do you want to catch Aaron Rodgers in when you? Have it's literally going to be after we win the Super Bowl. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to have them like underneath my uh, thigh pads, and like as soon as we, as soon as that like zero goes up, the double like triple zeros, and we win. I'm like, Aaron, can you please sign this real quick? And it goes over. <laughs> That's great. Get him with all the adrenaline going. Yeah, he's like, all right, let's fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh what is what's your relationship uh with rogers like is it uh have you guys always had a good relationship what's he yeah. what's he been like i'd say uh you know i i uh i've given this analogy a few times and i don't actually know if it does justice or even makes sense but to me it makes sense in my head so i'm gonna say yeah. um i see him like if you're like a little kid you're maybe like imagine six-year-old you and you got an uncle who's in college, maybe not six years old, maybe like 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. And you got an uncle who's in college, like kind of like, you know, really, really like suave, like really doing this thing, like has like a really like hot girlfriend. You're like 10 year old. Oh my God, but she's so hot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. like running away every time that she comes in the room. Like that's Aaron <laughs> Rodgers to me. Like Aaron Rodgers is like the super cool uncle in college, like that just owns it. And it's like goaded in my mind. Yeah. And so, um, obviously it's really cool uh when i first you know uh got there like it was super like i never wanted to approach him or anything like that but as the time has like gone and you know obviously i've played and performed and came up in some clutch situations and things like that obviously the trust and that relationship has grown I, I i would say like one thing about him is you know obviously he's gold jacket hall of famer the best ever throw the football um but a big thing with him is his standard. His standard is what it is. And like, he does not let that get lowered. And that's, I think what has made the, you know, the Packers so good for so long, especially with him at the helm. It's just, you know, he understands where it needs to be. He's won a Super Bowl. He's won MVP. He's won another one this year. Um, but just like he sets that standard and holds everybody to it. And so I feel like the more times, you know, you can meet that standard after this game, you met it. After this game, you met it. After this practice, you met it. Then that's when that trust and that like relationships. And now he'll like joke around with me a little bit and stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, like this is really cool. But um, that's fun. Like really cool uncle is our relationship, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, is it uh, because you the way you're describing is initially you're like nervous to like kind of approach him or whatever. Yeah. Then how does that dynamic translate on the field? Like, do you have those same nerves or is this like, no, this is what I've trained for. This is what I what I do. Absolutely. I mean, I'd be I'd be lying if I said like when I first got out there in a game, like I still wasn't, you know, I, I mean, I still get nervous. Like I still haven't hit that point in my NFL career yet where I'm just like, Oh, you know, I've played this game a million times. Like I got, I get nervous for any game, like still out there. Like, Oh man, like I you know, make sure I'm prepared. Like a second, get like not second guess, but like overanalyzing before we actually get out there. But um, I would say, you know, as kind of time's gone, just like you said, like in practice, like, you know, you know, I've done this. Like we, we, we bank reps, we, we have great communication out there and I've showed up in, you know, moments where I've needed to, and you can count on me. So I think it's a big, just part of like accountability and not wanting to, you know, let him down or let the the guys around you down. So yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. Who's your best friend on the team? Ooh, oh, this is tough because now, nah, all right, a good, good friend. You can name a, yeah, a couple. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, don't want you to signal like, Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I mean, uh, I'd say my rookie class uh, has a lot of the guys that I'm closer with. So last year, I uh, just thought like Dominique Daphne, Jordan Love, uh, Patrick Taylor, uh, number 27, the running back, uh, yeah. Chris Barnes. Josiah DeGuara, like a bunch of like Vernon Scott, a bunch of the guys who I came in with, obviously we, we had that bond and things like that. Uh, but I would say the one that kind of pops out to me right away are Alan Lazard and uh, Aaron Jones, guys that aren't in that 
Ricky class with me. Yeah. Uh, Alan was the first person I've ever drove myself. I actually, once again, on a tangent, I got my license. My first ever license is a Wisconsin license. Yes. So I'm a, I'm, yes. I'm a scum. I'm a scum. Like, <laughs> yeah, through and through. I know I always say it. I'm like, Mary Dork. But like, I learned how to drive in Wisconsin. My my fiat like my when i first got out here all i did ever did in boston was just uber everywhere yeah. and the first thing i did when i got out here i went to downtown green bay and i bought a bike i ubered over there i bought a bike and drove it all the way back to my apartment across from lambo and i was convinced i got snow tires i got bought like a five thousand dollar bike because i'm oh. like this is my this is my only mode of transportation so i'm like <laughs> i got snow tires to replace and I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter when it's snowing out. I had no idea what Green Bay what winters are like. When it's snowing out, I'll just put on my jacket and my gloves and I'm just biking. Like, I don't need a car because I've never drove. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but my fiance taught me how to drive in the parking lot of Lambo, which is a really funny story. <laughs> yeah, tell me about that. Honda Accord. <laughs> I, I, in her Honda Accord, was it stick yeah. shift? No, it, it, it's not a stick shift, but it was like, it's super tight. Like, it's so funny. Where'd you meet her? I met her out here. Uh, she's from. She went to Ash Robinson, so uh, okay. high school, and went to Wisconsin uh, okay. for college. But I met her out here. Uh, I went to work out. You know, I give. I guess I'm a little shout out to Synergy because you know, oh, they yeah. hooked it up. Uh, right. I went to Synergy, and there's like all these pictures, uh, which is a workout place out here in the Green Bay area. Yeah, and uh, there's all these pictures of, like athletes and all the pro athletes that worked out there. Blah blah blah. Yeah. But uh, my fiance was actually like very, very, very like good gymnast her she has a picture of uh all her i have a picture of all my like college letters on the ground like, yeah in my bedroom and it's all covered just all college letters you name it there's a school down there and it looks so cool and i was really humbled one day when she's like she showed me a picture and it's like two pictures worth of just all of her medals from gymnastics over oh, the years God. and it's just like wow but anyway needless to say back to the story she uh i was like hey who's that and he was like, oh like actually she's uh here in town blah blah, blah. and you know one thing led to another i met her and you know. wait what like what what's the one thing that led to the other uh the one thing that led to another is you know obviously uh you know very good instagram sliding <laughs> you know it's a modern day it's a modern day love story you know who's that get the name uh stalk through instagram yeah Build up the courage to send the DM, like a couple pictures. Oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa! What was what was the first DM? That is a really good question. That is. Where's know. your phone like, at? Where's your phone at? Yeah, let is me, it embarrassing let me, or what? like people no, got to no, know how to? I, 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 def I definitely in. didn't have the confidence of coming hot like that. <laughs> uh, it's not embarrassing. It's not like some great, <laughs> crazy. But uh, I don't. I, I probably comment. I we have so many DMs now. But oh, I yeah. probably like comment. I, I I always like to. Back in my day, now I'm a you know engaged man, husband material. But back back <laughs> in the day, you know, I always uh like to like kind of lead in with a joke. You know, you, you yeah. understand. I like, get yeah, that. A joke, you know, yeah. Kind of level the playing field. See, because if you're not if you don't have humor, like we're never we're not gonna get along at all. Like if you yeah. don't understand that, and my humor is kind of dry humor, kind of like dad jokes, like yeah. one of those. Like if you had a little soundboard, it would be. <laughs> yeah like that, that that would be that, yep. that's my type of humor and which so, you do have on your podcast by the way a I soundboard do, do. and great dad jokes yeah so uh so you 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 like her profile uh yeah. you like a few photos and then you you slid in with a joke that was yeah it. probably yeah probably a good joke and then yeah honestly it was uh really fun like she wasn't even gonna hang out with me like she really? one of her friends actually talked her into hanging out with me she was like eh uh, I don't know why. Like, why was she gonna do it? She was she was this close to canceling the first time we hung out. She was this close to canceling, and uh, her other plan with her friend fell through, and <laughs> she like had no choice. And she's like, I don't know tonight. I was like, No, just go. Was like, <laughs> so it's like really. really <laughs> where where would she say uh, caused the hesitation? Uh, I just think like you know uh nfl athlete just got drafted like yeah. i mean she went to wisconsin like she's not no dummy like she yeah. know like you know nobody's that like I, I i'm not gonna lie like my intentions weren't as pure as they are now like when i first you know <laughs> slid yeah, in right. the dms right, right. um but you know that's the great thing about her she changed me for who i am now but um yeah so she was like ah, don't really know if i want to do that but it's so funny like looking back at those old messages i always joke about it because 
obviously like she's told me like her, her conversations with her friends back then and stuff and one of her messages to her friend when she was like hey maybe you should go hang out with him she goes to her friend he's so clingy <laughs> <laughs> Because like this is this is the middle this is the middle of COVID and so I'm out here in Green Bay don't know anybody don't have furniture no family out here like everything's closed this is like when like COVID like you can't even go to like the restaurants or anything so I'm just yeah. ordering food and everything and I'm like so all I have time for is to just text her every day I'm like hey what are you doing <laughs> you need to come over like what's your favorite color and so it's so funny because I like now it's like oh are you going to the, are you going out like can i come like, yeah. but, like she'll ask me but it's so funny she's like remember when you were the clingy one <laughs> yeah. so yeah and and she um she so when was it in this uh whole covid dating situation she taught you how to drive uh i'd say a couple months in uh i mean she had to drive me everywhere so like i said obviously we didn't have preseason uh, the 2020 season, there's no preseason because I was like peak COVID. We didn't have any camp or OTA. So really, I didn't go into the facility until like the training camp started, oh. which was, I don't know, July, August, whatever. So yeah. I, and I, and I got drafted in late April yeah. and I moved right here. So for all that time, I was just hanging out. And so I was going to work out in places and things, and she'd have to drive me every day. Like, can you drive me? Can you drive me? And <laughs> what happened so, to the bike? What happened to the bike at this point? Dude, the bike, literally, like, like I said, I spent like $5,000 on that bike, and that's not like a like a weird flex, because like I thought that that was going to be my mode of transportation throughout the streets of Green Bay. Yeah. Um, and it's still at that apartment, still hanging there on the lock <laughs> because I lost the key and I moved out. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> just left it there i don't know where the key <laughs> and i don't bike anymore <laughs> yeah right but okay. yeah, so it's still there it's, it's an icon uh oh, nice. if, if so anybody nice. if anybody watching the show happens to find the apartment and you know just just touch that bike it'll give you two years good luck <laughs> <laughs> they're touching the the pick of the uh, to the <laughs> lock to try and sell yeah. that sucker <laughs> yeah little uh, snow tires on that thing yeah <laughs> so she gets sick of driving you and then says yeah, right, yeah. i'm gonna so, teach you yeah so she's like there's no way i'm uh like what am i then i just turned 22 because my birthday was may 2nd my birthday is may 2nd so i had just turned 22 and she's like you're 22 and like you don't drive. like there's no like you gotta figure it out and so uh we go to the lambo parking lot and there's no cars in there and she lets me get behind the wheel in this small Honda core. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not like seven foot or anything or like 300 pounds. Like I'm not a massive human being, but I'm very broad. Yeah. You know, like I have really broad shoulders and stuff. So like that type of stuff, like we're in really big legs. So being in small, like small space, like airports, like that's or airplanes is awful for me. <laughs> but, um, so I'm driving around, like she teaching me how to park and everything like that. But, yeah, I went to get my driver's test after I did my permit and smooth sailing. You passed the first time? Passed the first time I did my driving test. Um, I only had two things off. Two well, points off. Well, I mean, do you remember what they were for? Like, where, where's your, uh, I, I know, where's your I weakness? Know, I think they were both, uh, you know, I. it was kind of one of those things where you ever see those guys and they're playing football and, those celebrations where they're running the goal line, they drop the ball right before they score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That's pretty much what it was. I I did my uh you know parallel park great. I did my three point turn great. I'm doing my blanket, doing all this, and she's the the lady in the the seat. She's talking to me. She's like, "Wow, like you're doing great. Like for your first time, like that. Like how how long have you been practicing? Like did you go to driver's school? I'm like, nah, I'm just out here winging it. <laughs> and um, so and I'm doing so good throughout the entire test. And then the last uh the last turn at a, like an intersection there's a light and you take a left to get back to the dry, uh, dmv and i like don't look back like to, I, I know there's no cars coming so i don't like left right yeah, left right. and she's like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, 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 that, so that was a weakness i was getting a little i was feeling myself a little too much you were leon like high stepping into the end zone and then you got exactly. that ball stripped uh exactly 
anything well i guess you can't even compare driving in the midwest to anywhere else you know you, yeah. you do you have the wave down do you have the wave like yeah waving people past yeah the i mean i've down? heard uh i remember i was laughing because uh you know i was watching uh some of your stuff and some of your you know reels and tiktoks you had and one that was really funny was the you know the four-way stop sign yeah, yeah, intersection yeah. where you wait for somebody else to come <laughs> like that it's actually so real but yeah no, i got the way the little uh Hold on to the like I'm on the wheel, you know, give them a little finger. Give the two fingers. You know, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm a Jeep. I got a Jeep, so Jeep wave. Oh um, nice. <laughs> uh, nice. But yeah. Excuse the interruption, ladies and gentlemen, but I just want to thank the the sponsors of this podcast. First and foremost, Jolly Good Soda, the title sponsor. They've been so good to us. And uh, it's a great soda. I've enjoyed it since I was a kid. You can get it if you go to any grocery store in Wisconsin. You just get on up there and you ask them for that Jolly Good Soda. They'll point you right toward it. If they don't have Jolly Good, just say, hey, are, are you going to get that Jolly Good in or no? And they, they probably won't say or no to your face. Uh, but if you still can't find the grocery store, just go to jollygoodsoda.com. You can order it right offline. You can order their merch, and that goes for anybody anywhere in the U.S. Uh, if you don't have it in your own local grocery store. Also, I want to thank Duluth Trading Company for being a proud sponsor of the Cripes Cast, or at least a sponsor of the Cripes Cast. And their clothes, I will tell you, are something I'm proud of. Uh, wearing every day because it's great stuff. It's designed and the whole deal right here in the Midwest, uh, right in Wisconsin, actually, Mount Horeb, Wisconsin. Uh, great folks working over there. We've done a ton of fun videos with them. They've been an absolutely amazing partner and their clothes are fantastic. They've got everything. But what, what, what I like about Duluth is that they really just focus on the most practical clothes you can get. So if you have a job that needs to get done, Duluth Trading Company, they got the clothes that'll help you get that job done okay and i will tell you it's fashionable stuff too okay the other day at lambo field in fact i was wearing my camel cargo pants and i did the lambo leap in them and and they were they worked out fantastically i will tell you i did crash into the wall yes uh but that was because i cannot jump not because of the pants and then uh over the weekend i went pheasant hunting with my dad in those exact same cargo pants uh, because they were still on the floor. You know, they were in that weird position where like they weren't dirty enough to go into the uh, hamper. So they just kind of hung out on the floor. Anyway, they now have uh, pheasant blood on them. Okay, this got a little too graphic, I think, for the advertisement portion of the podcast. So anyway, I'm going to shut up. But uh, bottom line, Duluth Trading Company, comfortable clothes, fantastic clothes. Check them out, DuluthTrading.com. Finally, we've got Valentine's Day coming up. Is it really coming up or are you just saying that for the purposes of this ad? Probably the latter. And what better way to say I love you to your special someone than something that says watch out for deer and luckily for you if you go to cripescast.com click on the merch section uh we got uh, we got shirts that says watch out for deer koozies that say watch out for deer we got lures that say watch out for we got the whole deal okay and if watch out for deer is not the way you want to say i love you to your special someone well that don't worry we got keep her moving shirts we got ope shirts we got uh tell your folks i says hi and everything in between cribbage boards too fishing lures koozies did i say yes you did charlie you're forgetting what you're saying you should get back to the podcast okay thanks so much for listening to the ad section uh we'll see you real quick once bye-bye i'm gonna give you a couple other uh fan questions here what were your thoughts this is from wisco's food adventures wisco adventures uh what was your thoughts when you heard the packers drafted you uh i was i was honestly my initial thoughts I had no idea who was calling me um, on draft night. Once again, COVID, we all know it. Uh, I was in California where I was training. So my family was on Zoom with me for draft night and we're sitting there in my agents. Uh, well, I thought I was going to Seattle, which is pick 64. Yeah, I got picked 62nd and I'm like, you know what? Like I'm last pick of the second round. I'm going to Seattle, like for sure. Um, and I don't know at all if this is actually what Seattle is going to do or whatever, but that's just like what we all thought. And um, I get a call. And it's really funny because now I know Ash Wobbing and I know how to say and all that stuff, but I'm looking at my phones. Ash Wobbing? Like, <laughs> who is trying to prank? Like, yeah. Wisconsin? Yeah. I'm, I'm an East Coast guy. Like, I know the Packers are obviously in Wisconsin, but I don't 
like I'm not thinking about the Packers. I didn't really yeah. think I was going to go get drafted by the Packers. So I'm like, who's trying to prank call me right now? And I'm like, I answer the phone kind of like rude. I'm like, hello. And it is, oh, hi, this is, uh, I don't know if it was uh, Goody Kiss or if it was uh, Matt LaFleur first, but one of the two, it's like, hey, this is Matt LaFleur, head coach of the Green Bay Packers. Are you ready to be a Packer? I'm like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fired up. Um, so it's really funny because I obviously had no idea, like, any of these town names and stuff like that. But I thought it was a prank call at first. Right. And um, obviously had a great time uh, that night. Don't remember much of it. Got after it with my buddies. And uh, when I woke up the next day, we're all sitting there kind of hungover. And like eating like Eggo waffles and ordering Uber Eats because you know now I'm an NFL player. Like you can, everything's you can do on that. me. <laughs> Every, everything's on me. Whatever you want from McDonald's, like I got that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I, I put on like a two-hour documentary of like Green Bay Packers, and so it showed the history. I got a really good glimpse of. Obviously, didn't cover everything, but you know the the fandom, the football over the years, and then it was like how it's obviously owned by the people and it like interviewed like this elderly lady who's had the tickets in her family for years and blah, 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 all that stuff. So, you know, it was like really cool to see. And then I, I'm the type of person, like if I'm in on something, I'm all in. Yeah. And so I got drafted. I want to say it was a 26 and it might've been a Saturday or whatever. I moved out to green Bay three days after I got drafted. Really? Kind of like I was in California training. I was like, pack all my stuff and go to Green Bay. This is the middle of COVID. Nothing's open. Don't know anybody in Green Bay. Cannot work out in the facility because, once again, this is our first year of COVID in the NFL. There's no in the facility. Couldn't meet any, any of the players. Couldn't meet any of the coaches. Nothing. So I'm just out in Green Bay. And I moved out to Green Bay. The first thing I see getting off the plane, it's like middle of the night. I call an Uber. First thing I see is like this biker gang, which I've never seen ever <laughs> again in the Green Bay. Oh, really? But the first thing I see leaving the airport is like all these guys in leather jackets on bikes. And I'm just like, where am I? <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? But yeah, I moved out here three days later and you know, the rest is history. That's awesome, man. Yeah, they were probably all riding Harleys. They were probably all <laughs> sold insurance, uh, and this yeah. was their weekend warrior uh, stuff. <laughs> what is this? This is Wisconsin. Yeah, well, that that might lead into the <laughs> next question. Um, this is from um, Tuuris. What, what was the biggest culture shock uh, that you've had since moving to the Midwest? Uh, also, tell your folks he says hi. So, oh well, Tom, um, I said thank you. I, I'd say the biggest culture shock I'd had overall is just how friendly everybody is, which I love, love it, love it, love it so much. Uh, you know, I'm a big family person, just kind of the environment I grew up in, big family, big uh, like connections, relationships and things like that. Uh, but, I, and I've told this story a bunch too, but when I first got out here, like I said, moved out here three days, like three days after I got drafted, people, I posted a Instagram, like, you know, in Green Bay, the location thingy. And people are responding like, hey, like, you need some food? Like, I just made this left. I have this leftover lasagna. I can come swing it by. And me, like, being from this, like, I'm not going to like a oh, city. Like, but I, I'm from, like, where you don't accept food from strangers. <laughs> right. But it, right. <laughs> like, it's just, like, not common for a stranger to offer you food. I'm like, no, thanks. I don't want you to know where I live. Yeah. But that's genuinely just how nice that people are here. And, and so over time, like, obviously going up to Door County all the time and even just hanging out in Green Bay and going to do appearances and things like that that I've done over time, meeting all these different people and, you know, the Midwest and Green Bay, especially. Um, that's the one thing, just being from where the East Coast, where everything's a lot busier, where everybody's kind of like, I need to get from this place, from point A to point B. And, you know, on a mission, I, I'd say, you know, how genuinely nice everyone is, is was the biggest culture shock. Well, and you speaking of Door County, that's like another like I got five questions asking yeah. about you being yeah. the mayor of Door County. You have the key to yeah. Door County. I, I do have the key. Yeah, <laughs> I got the key yeah. to Mandawak. Actually, we should manage really? keys at some point. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's on the thing over there. Actually, yeah. yeah, go get your key. You got your key. All right, all right, all right. let's do it. <sighs> All right, we'll do a reveal. We'll do a reveal here. We'll do, we'll do yeah. three, two, one. 
You show me your key. I'll show you my key. Three. All right. Here, we'll do it. I feel like this isn't the first time you've ever showed a guy your key. This is, this is, don't, (laughs) don't say it like that. This is the first time I've ever showed another guy my key on Zoom. I'm honored. Okay. On the count of three, three, two, one. Oh, look at that. I see my reflection in your key box. Holy smokes. You got this. See, look at this. This, by the way, is the difference between Door County and Manduak right here. Okay. You yeah. got you got a nice box. You got yeah, a black. I mean, yeah. And I got this big ass key. It's from the Miro, uh, the, the old Miro company. <laughs> and and you can actually use this the way this works in Manduak is you could just you just smash a window and you're welcome in. Hey, bring, you <laughs> bring your key back up though. Let's look yeah, at that sucker. It. That's that is nice. Little, wow, little look at that. And it says for your ongoing love of our destination. Destination. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. So what uh how did you become so in love with Door County? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I feel like this podcast has really just become me, just shout out my fiance, but uh, you know, her family has a place up there in uh Egg Harbor. Ooh. And so going up there all the time um, over like the last couple of years, like year plus, whatever. Yeah. Um, just going up there, hanging out in the summers and going up and just finding so many things that I loved. And it was just kind of like a genuine, you know, when you're posting stuff on your story, genuinely, gen, wow. Genuinely. Genuinely. I, I felt, I, that's one of those weird words to me. Alex. That, that one, that one, that one, that one hurt me. I, yeah. like, <laughs> my brain literally just tied in a knot. <laughs> But when you genuinely like take a picture and post on your story because you want everybody else to like see like how fun this is or like yeah. how cool it is, like I just kind of found myself doing that all the time. Like these are the best wings ever. Try these. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm putting you on. I'm telling you that this is it. Or uh, do you see the goats on the roof at Al Johnson? Et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Like uh, so, just, just that, just having a fun time, and you know, really organic. And it wasn't ever like I'm trying to get anything out of it. And then I joked around about getting a key for a long time. I was like, give Quasilla the key. And, you know, <laughs> here we are. The great thing is there's a lot of doors up there. So the, the opportunities are endless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody locks their doors. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, hey, speaking of, of Quadzilla, uh, w- this is a question. Uh, and I think you're going to have a, um, a pretty... Uh, Big response to it from Peter uh, Flayen. Uh, what's your message to people who skip leg day? Oh, um, no message. Ooh. Silent treatment. Just silent treatment. I like that. I like that. That's good. That's per- That's the TikTok right there, actually. You know what? We're going to do that one more time and you just be silent. Okay. What is your message to people who skip leg day? Fair enough. Next question. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. That's cool. We do have to. Do you have my moment to talk about the yeah. podcast and everything? You're good on time. Yeah, I'm chill. Oh, I have great. nothing. Cool. Today's are off day. Oh, great. Okay. Well, don't tell me that. I'll go. F- you know, <laughs> you will yeah. be stuck in a Midwest goodbye here, and you're you're never gonna. Wait. Uh, what? So, what inspired you to start the podcast? And was that your initial um, sort of foray into social media, or have you always been into social media? Yeah, uh, I'd say I've always been into social media. Uh, one thing you kind of touched upon earlier was, you know, podcasts, uh, streaming video games on Twitch, uh, TikTok, this, that. I've always been, like I said, all in on things. And so yeah. uh, I've really, de- honestly, probably in the last two or three years, like I'd say right before I got to the league. So like the year before that. Uh, just kind of really owning who I am and kind of being unapologetic about it. And so like my card collection and all that stuff, there is such a big following about it. I didn't do it because people thought it would be cool or I didn't know what the turnout would be. I just like to do it. Uh, so I, you know, put it out there. I like to play video games. I'm going to play way too many hours of video games in the off season. And why not, you know, one, get paid and talk to the fans while I do it. Yeah. Um, things like that. I love to uh, talk to people. I love to do what, when I'm asked to do appearances or uh, interviews and things like that. Like I genuinely like talking. So um, I was like, what am I going to do with this? Like, I do like to talk. I like that type of stuff. And 
uh, my brother-in-law, Will Tunin, the Tunin to Dylan part. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. By the yeah. way, who came up with that title? Uh, honestly, his dad came up oh, with it. Oh, his dad did? Dave, shout, out, shout out Dave Tunin, who's <laughs> going to be at your show in Naples. I, oh, yeah. Need to get, that, needs to be a, that needs to be a sound bite. Sound bite. Shout out Dave Tunin for coming up with the Tunin Dylan name. I, uh, I'm going to take but, care of them in Naples. I, yeah. I, I, uh, very, very well because I, yeah, I was, awesome. yeah, I, yeah. I, I, and I got to give them props, uh, for that yeah. name. That's fantastic. It, 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 it's, it's actually like really, really good. It's just like one of those like tune in to like, yeah. tune in. like <laughs> it, it, it really works. And, um, but yeah, so he, he came up with that and, you know, we were kind of tossing around the idea like, Hey, maybe we could, you know, start a podcast and, whatever and and it's genuinely been fun and you know one one word of advice that he kind of gave to both of us uh dave uh will's dad was you know just do it like what do you like if you don't if it doesn't work out if you don't like it you can end it like just, yeah what like don't don't just sit around and never try it so we tried it and you know we're seven episodes and we had you on we had yeah. alan lazard on uh, we're gonna have some more guests on but you know it's really just two guys shooting the shit kind of like this and you know having a good time and you know, it's been fun. And like I said, I like to interact with fans when I can. So kind of showing them who I am outside of the helmet and, you know, just having them be able to hear a different side of me is, you know, equally as fun. Yeah. And it also like, you know, you talk about, um, you know, kind of what you do after football and you want to yeah. kind of, and this, I feel like allows you to really set your course. Um, mm -hmm. No matter what happens in football, you can always do um, this stuff and build a yeah. following and, and this is like, this is like my film. This is like my game film. I'm going to send this out. Like when I, when I'm ready to retire and everything, I'm like, Hey, you see these podcasts, you see this interview with Charlie, like, <laughs> I, I, like here, take this. Like I'm ready for the big stage. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do that? Would you ever do like, uh, like NFL network or ESPN or any of that stuff? Yeah. You know, I never say never. I never say never. I, I do have this inkling though, that like when I'm, I, I hope my my end all be all goal. Like I already told you earlier in the uh, episode or in this was, you know, what my like drive is and everything. My hope though is that and I'm not saying this just because I'm a play here. My hope is to play for the Green Bay Packers, just just the Green Bay Packers as long as I can until I'm just not good enough anymore. Like they're like they tell me I'm not good enough yeah. anymore, and I'm just like all right, I hang it up yeah. and just. I, I have this inkling that once I get to that point, like I might not want to do any more football talk. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. but I, I will never say never, but I do. I definitely, I don't know what it is. I don't know what Avenue it is, but I don't, I do have a feeling that whatever I do is definitely going to be somehow interacting, talking to people. I just don't know what it is yet. Yeah. 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 Put it in the comment section below. <laughs> uh, hey. What do you think my next, avenue to be <laughs> so you you don't see yourself uh leaving wisconsin no i me and uh my fiance just we're in our new house still coming together just yeah. bought a house uh you Congrats. know regardless of where football takes me uh whether you know i like i said i do play for the Packers forever or i do get traded or whatever regardless of football i'm living here this is where our roots are I love it. I genuinely do. I got the key to Door County for Pete's yeah, sake. Yeah, I know. You uh, yeah, no, and you just I, said I, for I, Pete's I'm sake. Not, I'm not leaving. Uh, yeah. The guys on the team joke around. They're like, oh, he's a four lifer. Yeah. But like, I really am. I, I love it out here. And, you know, I, um, this is, you know, my new home and nothing's going to change that regardless of where football takes me. I'm, you know, I'll always be back here. I love that, man. And you said uh, your fiance changed you. Uh, how'd she change you? I'd say just, uh, you know, my priorities, uh, I just, obviously, I mean, being engaged and, you know, being committed and all that things. Like when you're going, you're the big man on campus and you're kind of, you know, trying to do this, like talk to this girl, girl or, uh, you know, looking on social media for this or we're all designer for this. Like, you know, so it looks like whatever. I mean, I wore freaking overalls to our last <laughs> Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, it's just, I, I guess, really just priorities and what's important. Uh, it's not anything, I guess, that like she wrote down on a piece of paper and was like, this is what you need to do. But I think just, you know, hanging out with her over time and kind of made me realize like what was most important to me, what I wanted my future to look like, things like that. And, you know, 
I, and I'm not ripping. I, you know, I said the thing about designer. I'm not saying like I don't wear nice things from now and again, or you can't. I'm just saying for me now, like instead of buying a thousand dollar pair of shoes, like why not put a use that thousand dollars to like help out this house or like you know what I'm saying. So just like what's most important to me for me mm-hmm. and uh, for us. Uh, as a, you know, starting to, you know, build a family and getting married, you know, us two as an immediate family now. Um, just just that, your priorities over everything, just what meant most. I think she really kind of brought that out of me where I was kind of distracted with this and that and looking good for everybody else. You know, I can, I go to bed at night knowing that what I do from a day to day is generally because I want to do it. It's not because I'm getting a check or because this or that it's just I do enjoy what I'm doing whether it's video games whether it's trading cards whether it's doing the podcast um I like doing what I do like what I'm doing and she brought that out of me yeah I mean I think even what you said about being in Door County and wanting to actually post the yeah. thing on social I can't think just about genuine. It. yeah I don't um just being on social media a lot myself there's not uh it's not always like you want to do it you kind of do it because you want to yeah. that's how the algorithm works um what and also you wearing those uh bib overalls uh when yeah. when my dad first met my mom he was wearing bib overalls and no shirt <laughs> so i was i was laughing showing him that picture uh <laughs> that's funny um it, so what has been just switching it over to the packers before we kind mm-hmm. of end this what has been your favorite moment of being a green bay packer so far hmm favorite moments being green bay packer we're talking football or just like moment it can be it can be just a thing that happened um it can be a, you know a feeling anything um i'd say and, and it might not be the answer like everybody was hoping for they're hoping for like you know when you score two touchdowns and ran over this dude i'd say genuine like honest answer um the day i got the key to door county before I went to the like dinner or whatever to get the key, which uh, was a whole other story. Before that, I went to the YMCA in Sturgeon Bay, and we did like this kind of it was like a, they do it like after school camp type of thing, and uh, like there's all these like little kids, probably probably like 50, 60 kids, and all their parents are up top, uh, like on a, one of those above tracks type yeah. of things, and yeah. so they're all up there, and it's just me down there and some like uh some staff and i'm th- running them through drills and all this stuff um i will say like that was the most like and honestly i really haven't thought about it since until right now but it's the first thing that came to my mind like actually makes so much sense i was out there just hanging out with these kids and they were just so fired up that i was there they made all the they all drew their sign these signs and pictures for me and things like that and it's just you know, that impact, like, like I said, like, I'm not one of those guys who's like, grew up, kind of came out the womb, like, I want to play in the NFL. I, I do think it was something that, like I told you earlier, it's something that built over time. And so I feel like with that, like, if, like, if football were to end tomorrow, like, I would be okay, because I know, like, I'm, I'm in the right headspace that like, I can navigate a different, you know, avenue and be okay. And I have that support system kind of recapping on everything we talked about today but Mm -hmm. um having that impact on all those kids and just like how happy they were to see me as just something that like i just never really take for granted uh and it's really hard to put into words but you know just going out like the 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 joy that i could see that they were having like after a day of school because i remember being that kid um, I didn't have any like NFL players show up to my after school program, but I remember being that kid who's like, you're going through your elementary, whatever. And now you get to hang out with your friends, but if an NFL player walked in there or like Adrian Peterson walked in there, I would have been like over the moon. And so it's so cool to just be able to have that impact. Like I was there for 45 minutes, but to have that impact for 45 minutes and, you know, eventually they'll forget it. You know, they're little kids and they're like, Oh, AJ Dillon. I saw him one time I took a picture, but at right now like that's really cool to them and to be a part of that um is awesome so that's my favorite part favorite memory of being a packer this far for sure yeah that's that's a great answer that's uh i don't think uh 
uh, publicists could have written a better answer for you. I think that was pretty good. Uh, what, <laughs> um, what uh, I want to touch on your Lambo leaps. What's, can you give me your favorite Lambo yeah. leap? Uh, I'd, I'd still say my favorite one is the first one I ever did. Uh, Paint that picture so, for us. Uh, so first one we're in, we're playing uh, the Titans at home. Uh, I believe it was December. Yeah. I remember it was snowing, snowy. So it was really cold. And uh, I had a inside zone play, bounced to the outside, broke two tackles, and I'm running, I'm running. And there's no fans. So it's like, once again, COVID season. Yeah. I'm running. And I, I dropped the ball in the end zone, like to get ready for the land of the leap. And I take off from a little too far now, looking at the film, like I know. But one of our rules on our team is no excuses. So I'm not going to make an excuse. But what makes it so much fun? So I jump up. I get probably like the top of my hip up there and like fall back down. Definitely didn't get up there. And, uh, but I let out this like high pitch scream and it's really, like, it was just like, I honestly sound like, like a little girl scream. Like it's like, <laughs> ah! and it's so funny because it's on the film, it's on the, the TV recording. And so, uh, you know, obviously they played that the next day in the team <laughs> meetings. You're like, what the heck? And it was just like so, so funny. It, it, I don't know how, like, I'm sure like you can get that or I can find it somewhere, but it's lit, like I just scream like a little girl just trying to get up there. I'm like, oh man, like, and so um, that that's my favorite one just because it's just, it's the first. Like, obviously now, you know, I know a little bit and the fans are in there to help me. Yeah. I've been nailing them now, but yeah. That first one, first touchdown, first failed lead, the high pitch scream. Like, you don't get better than that. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, and now, like, for the Packers as a team going into uh, what we all hope will be a Super Bowl, but just this next game, yeah. what's what's the mentality? I mean, you just said uh, no no excuses is, is one. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just say the, the whole mentality is kind of just, you know, sticking together. I feel like this year uh we've had a lot of guys whether it be injuries or covid or uh what what have you a lot of guys have been either out or missing a little bit of time or this or that throughout our, our whole season big starters non-starters whatever and there's been so much i guess adversity and as, as far as like who's going to be there who's not going to be there um i've started the game because jonesy was out for like and so I'd say we've kind of developed that uh, mindset that it doesn't matter. And everybody talks about it, no matter what sport or whatever, like next man up. Yeah. But I really do feel like we've developed that where everybody is ready. They know what they're doing. And if they don't, and if you do make a mistake, the whole team's got you. Mm -hmm. And that's something I feel like is not, you know, not not talked about enough because like no one's going to talk about you know making mistakes and stuff like that but i i just feel like we kind of have that bond and that chemistry on the team where you know it doesn't matter who's in there um obviously we want all our star guys in there but like if it came down to it we're all ready to go and we all have each other's backs and uh i think that's our edge for sure yeah that's great and and you do you have any uh personal goals for this uh this playoff season uh, you know, just won a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, obviously, I, I'm really not a big, uh, I'm not a big stat guy, or like uh, I used to be, like in you know high school, like I want this X amount of yards and everything like that. Like it, it is great, um, all the you know accolades and stuff, but I'm more of just like personal growth. Like I want to get, like I said earlier in the uh, in, in the show, um, there are still times where I'm out there and like still a little nervous before the game. Like I just want to keep getting. And each week, week to week, I keep getting more and more comfortable and more confident in everything like that. I'm only in year two, but uh, I just say, you know, my goals are just to, you know, kind of go execute what my numbers call day after I got drafted or the day I got drafted before I started celebrating had way too much tequila. <laughs> I uh, got on, I did like a little press bite for the Packers yeah. and like a little uh, video like, hey, Packers Nation, blah, blah, blah. And the one thing I said, and it's still true now, and the like really end all be all, like what I want to be remembered for as a Green Bay Packer is whether it's first down, fourth down, uh, first quarter or overtime, I want everybody, whether it's the fans, the coaches, the players, the uh, shoot, the people on the hot dog stands to know like when I'm on the field, you can count on me, I can get the job done. You know, I just want to be reliable. 
uh, more than, you know, MVP, this, that, that, like, I don't like, like I said, didn't grow up that I want to be an NFL player. It's just, I want to be known as somebody who is reliable. Sure. I'm gonna make mistakes, but I want to be reliable. That, that, that's me. I want to be able to help out the team however I can. And so that's my goal going in the playoffs. It's always going to be my goal. Um, just making sure I can step up when my number's called. That's awesome, man. That's a, that's a heck of a goal. And yeah. uh, you've certainly done it. You've had a hell of a season. Congrats on that. And yeah. best of Appreciate luck it. in the playoffs. Before I let you go, is there anything I didn't ask that you're like, ah, I, I wish you would have asked that? You didn't ask about my extra toe, man. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. How did, tell me about it. How, yeah, the hell, so, how do I miss that? Thank you yeah, for so, reminding me. Seriously. Yeah, for sure. So on the back of my heel, I actually, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> no, come on. We want to see it. Let's see the extra toe. I knew you had yeah. one. The whole I, I, time. I can't. The last time, the last time a Packer player threw his toe on the <laughs> screen, the uh, internet broke down. So. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. I was really hoping you had an extra toe. I pretended like I knew all about it, and that that, that would have uh, been the secret. Um, any advice to anyone who wants to get in your position? Um, you know, I'd say, I'd say it really comes down to. Just kind of, I'd say like determination and, and stuff like that, staying disciplined, but it's not for me, what worked for me is not, you know, disciplined as in the sense, like all these motivational speakers talk about, you know, you got to make sure you're up every day, you stick to your thing. Like I was eating pop tarts and whatever in college and, you know, staying up way too late the night before I had practice and things like that. But I, I'd say like, find out what works for you find out you know what you really need to be the best you and run with it don't look at anybody else's recipe for success because it's all different it won't taste as good yeah. you know it's just whatever works for you you know it you don't have to tell anybody what it is it could be playing video games until the butt crack of dom and then going out and practice and that works for you like chad ochocinco said you either got it or you don't yeah stick to what worked for you and just own that and do that and keep doing it and just believe in yourself. That's more than anything that like, I always been on myself mentality. There's still times I second guess there's still times I wake up and I'm like, damn, I'm not like as good as I thought I was. But then like over time, you keep betting on yourself. Like you start to get in positions where like, like I am now talking to you or yeah. playing on NFL, like playing in the playoffs. You know, if I had to quit back, back then, like, uh, you know, it's just, just believe in yourself and do what works for you. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Great advice. I appreciate you coming on and uh, I got to get up to Door County. We got to do some. Uh, uh, hey, this summer, absolutely. Or this winter. Why don't we go ice fishing? I, 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 I want to go ice fishing. I okay. will for sure do that. Like I, once we win the Super Bowl, I'll be here. Okay. So let's do it. For, All right, for great. Sure. We can be one of those guys uh, in Door County. Uh, or in Green Bay on one of those ice strips that gets carried away. That could be yeah. us. You know? <laughs> exactly. Make sure you bring your key. We can touch tips. All right. <laughs> All right. It's coming. It's coming with me. I can't wait. All right. Absolutely. Hey, thanks, man. Good luck this year, and we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Appreciate you, man. All right. Be good. And there you have it. That's it for this week's episode of the Cripes Cast. Big thanks to AJ Dillon for coming on. Make sure you follow him at Instagram at AJ Dillon2. Uh, follow him on Twitter at AJ Dillon7. And of course, make sure you tune in to tune in to Dillon. It's AJ Dillon's podcast with his soon to be brother in law, Will Tunin. Both great guys. They're doing a great job with it. So make sure you check it out real quick once. Finally, you can follow Cripescast at Cripescast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for videos from these podcasts and uh, pictures, and a whole lot more. All right, that's it for this week. Everyone, keep her moving. Watch out for deer, and tell your folks I says hi. Real good. Bye-bye now. So roll out the barrel and get the band brewing. Life's got you down. Just keep her moving. It's on Wisconsin. The Badgers say it's the old Wisconsin Jubilee. You know, sometimes when you're ice fishing, you put your foot in the walleye hole and go ass over tea kettle and you think you're done no you gotta keep her moving 